Hey, welcome back to Mechanical Pros. I'm here with Quentin, and today we're talking about BRV Service Checker, um, how to use the tool, how to, what you need to set it up right, and, uh, and then what you would actually use it for. Um, Quentin, tell me what we got going on here. Sure. So there are three different offerings for uh, what we would call a service checker. So basically what the service checker is going to do is it's going to allow you to see um, how the VRV system is operating. Temperatures, pressures, compressor speeds, safeties, things of that nature. Um, the, the most common one that we hear about is the service checker, like the real service checker. And this is the one that you actually have to attend a series of classes and training for uh, to be authorized to make a purchase on it. The, um, uh, the service checker type four and type three, they're only usable on the VRV systems. Okay, so they don't work with mini splits. Mm -hmm. They don't work with die can fit or anything such as that. So it's a diagnostic tool that Daikin provides for VRV, and uh, and you plug it into uh, a Daikin VRV system. It gives you the the trending analytics and data, and then you can use that for diagnosing or um, sure. you know troubleshooting. Absolutely. Okay. The service checker. I went to. Uh, I brought my certificate, uh, my VRV certificate. I went to class in uh, August of 2011. It's been, it's been a little bit of time since I went through it. I wouldn't even know how to plug one in again, but the service checker I got trained on looked like a laptop um, kind of docking station. It was much bigger um, and it, you had to land wires on it and plug it into yeah. the wall and such. Yeah. Um, so that looks like a different model than kind of what I, is. I was used to working on. Yeah, it is. So this is the latest and greatest. This is the service checker four. Um, so this is the newest one that you can get right now. Um, there are a couple other devices that can be used um, that don't require training. Um, so we've got the cable D checker that's usable on VRV systems and mini splits. We also have the Bluetooth um, checker, which is uh, something that you would connect to your phone via Bluetooth okay. or iPad or something like that. Um, there are two different part numbers. Um, so one of them is for Apple products. Okay. The other is for you know Android and things like okay. that. Um, but the one that we're here to talk about today is the service checker. So a really common question we get asked, um, you know, after a technician has completed the proper courses, it might be a year, a year and a half, and they haven't, you know, had the opportunity to actually put the service checker to use. And so they call and say, hey man, can you walk me through how to set this up? Mm -hmm. So the first thing that you want to do is identify where you're going to terminate the communication cabling from the service checker to your VRV system, okay? And so if you have a single system, um, you know, and you don't have a, a central communication platform such as an iTouch manager yeah. or an iTouch controller or something like that, then you can, you can connect directly to uh, the board. You can connect directly to the board in any circumstance, but a lot of times it's a whole lot cozier if you can connect to that iTouch manager or iTouch controller or back net gateway. You can sit inside uh, a little bit cozier that way. Quint, uh, so tell me how, how to connect um, Service Checker, because one of the probably hardest things is just making sure you got you know the right cable, the right tools you need to connect it, that you're pulling that information out right, sure, and, uh, and that you're prepared. Um, and to me, that was one of the hardest things. So in order to connect the service checker four, you just have two connection points. Um, one of those is gonna be um, your 18-2 non-shielded, non-grounded wire, copper stranded, okay? And we're just gonna simply connect that to the screw terminals on the service checker. We only have two screw terminals. So we can't really land it in the wrong spot. It is not polarity sensitive. You can land it either which way you want. And we're going to land on the F1, F2 out terminals on our outdoor unit, okay? And so this printed circuit board is out of a VRV4 unit. And so this is representative of what you would see inside of a VRV4 unit. The system will need to be powered up in order to be able to pull data from it. But this is just purely for representative purposes. And so you would have to hook up to the outdoor board in the condensing unit. Not you can't pull in, into a thermostat. Right. So you would want to connect either um, at your outdoor unit printed circuit board of the master module, okay. or you can connect at a um, at a central communication point. You know, an iTouch manager, iTouch controller, DBX gateway, something like that. Um, sometimes you can get connected at F1, F2 in, which is these terminals. You know, inside somewhere. It's recommended that you connect to F1, F2 out because it's the most reliable, um, but you can connect on F1, F2 in it like a branch selector box or something like that. Okay. The other cabling that you're gonna have 
is going to be just a simple USB cable that's actually going to come with the service checker whenever you purchase it. You plug this in to the back of the um, service checker like so. And you just plug it into your laptop from that point. Okay? And lastly, you'll power your service checker up. So now you are physically connected to the service checker, to the system, to your laptop. Okay, and so now you can access the software okay. and you can start doing your checking. Okay, service checker three, I think we had to plug into the wall. That's true. That on this one. Yeah, so there's two different uh, flavors of the service checker three. One of those you did have to plug into a 120 volt um, receptacle. Um, the other one, it had two separate uh, cables, one for data transmission, one for power. Um, with service checker four, it's powered up and the data passes through the same cable. Okay. Can you save the data or uh, we always had on uh, service checker three, we had, to, we had to leave the laptop on site and you kind of, you know, hit it behind a box and hope to know sure. no one took it. <laughs> sure. So one of the hidden features on the uh, service checker four, I'm going to unplug this so that we can see it is if you buy a service checker four, it's going to come with a sticker that covers this. Uh -huh. It's one of those secrets. It's not really a secret because you can, you know, physically see all the attributes yeah. of it. You peel the sticker off and then you're able to insert an SD card. Okay. Um, you have to go through a, a special process on the software um, to enable that functionality. But what that does is it allows you to put a, an SD card in the device, give it a remote power source and unplug your laptop, take your laptop home, leave just the service checker okay. on site. So your laptop is now acting as a, uh, as a power source. So if, you, if you're not plugged in your laptop and you're doing an SD card, you do need a... You do need a power source, yeah. And it's, it's one of those small um, micro USB connections. And, you know, Got you it. plug it into the iPhone charger yeah. or whatever. Okay. And then it, even if in some instances we've, we've had um, actually where we, we couldn't connect to a 120 volt power supply, you know, new construction or something like that, mm -hmm. we have taken, you know, the large battery packs. Yeah. And, and powered up um, the checker that way. Okay. And so the next thing you'll want to do is you want to actually pull up the Daikin service checker software. Okay, so this software will be provided to you once you complete the uh, service checker um, training successfully. Mm -hmm. And as new revisions come out, you can reach out to your rep in your area and they'll provide you with the software and the necessary drivers. So we'll double click on the app and it'll pull it up. So anytime that you want to um, view live data or record data and store it on your computer, you will always want to come up here to record. Okay, so we'll click record. And if you have a number of sites already, they'll be listed here each and every time. If this is your first time um, using the service checker, you will want to um, create a new customer. So we'll click new customer. And then it's gonna ask you a series of questions. Okay, so you can fill this out as in-depth or as little as you want to. Um, this is basically just to help you um, find the data later. Exactly, exactly. So customer ID, we'll call this MRG lab test, and then that's all we're going to add here. So we'll click save. We'll come down here to MRG lab test, and we will select that customer. Okay, and so since it's a brand new customer, we will have to create a map. All right, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to inform you that the system may shut down for several minutes. Go ahead and click OK and we'll put a, ma a network map name in of MRG. So once you input the network map name, you'll click OK. And what will happen is it will start to try to communicate with the system, okay? So let's say that you get an error code and it says incorrect port or something such as that. Come up here to settings and go to port and see which port you're currently using, okay? If you need to know, if you're not sure what port you're using, then you can come over here to your Windows key. You'll press and release it. Type in device manager, and you'll want to come down here to ports, COM, and LPT. And so basically the only ports that you're going to see are the ones that are currently connected. And so since I only have this one connected, it'll be COM4. Yeah. Okay, and that's, that's usually a big hang up for people for getting connected for the first time. Yeah, I can see how I get lost. And so once the um, units become discovered, they'll start to present themselves. In the top left, you'll see system number one. This doesn't necessarily mean anything. This isn't any sort of address or anything. This is just mm -hmm. kind of an auto assignment that's provided from the software. All right, so this is a system on its own. We'll press the down arrow key, and this is another system. So we have two systems in our lab. One of them is a VRV4 system. One is a VRV3S system. And so this is our VRV4 system. You notice that all of the icons are gray. Yeah. That means they're off, okay? So this icon here that looks like a pair of outdoor units, yeah, that's what it is, it's outdoor units. 
These icons are your indoor units. Got it. This little number right here, this 005, is your AirNet address for the outdoor unit. And so that's how we easily identify which outdoor system we're looking at. Yeah. And so if you have 10 systems with 10 units, it might be cumbersome to try to figure out which system is which. So you have the ability to put an AirNet address in each of your outdoor units so that you can easily identify which system you're working with. And you can't have multiple of the same address. That's right. You can't have multiple of the same address. That The address will be unique to um, each piece of gear, and that goes with the indoor units as well. Got it. So the first number that you see on the left of this indoor unit is a group address. This number here on the right is your AirNet address. Okay. And so let's toggle back up here to VRV System 3. So. Same thing here, we've got a one-to-one -one system, all right? But the next thing is you might want to do whenever you're um, troubleshooting a system is you might want to put the system in, into on mode, okay? And so you do have the ability to do that through the service checker, um, but only if you have input group addresses at each of your indoor units, okay? What if you don't? Do you have to go back and give them addresses? You have to go back and give them addresses. Okay. And so the group address functionality will not be present on your controller if you don't have a central uh, communication point connected to the system. And so if you don't have an iTouch manager, iTouch controller, DBACS gateway, you're not going to have that option. If you connect the service checker, that's considered a central control point. Okay, and then you'll be able to go in and put those group addresses in. Okay. So then you'll be able to control them remotely. And so let's say that we wanted to um, turn this unit on right here. Group address 1-00002. So we'll come to centralized operation. And this is how the group addresses are laid out. You look at this, this is your first character. These are your second two characters. So 1-00, as you see right here, is this unit. So all we have to do to turn it on is press the run key. So here in a few moments, we'll see this icon turn green, and then ultimately we'll see the, uh, the outdoor unit come on with that. So another key feature um, that you'll want to know about with the service checker is the ability to record data um, to leave your service checker on site and review it at a later time. Let's say that you've got to go get some data, but you don't have time to sit around and watch yeah. it live. Or maybe something's happening in the dead of the night every night and you want to capture it. You'll come to record mode, and then you'll come to PC record start. You'll know that the recording is active whenever you have the red letters at the top. If you don't have the red letters at the top, the system, the, the service checker is not recording data. You'll be very disappointed if you come back the next day and try to extract that data, and it's not there. Quentin, so uh, tell me, what tools do you do you do you know you have to have on on your truck, and what tools you know do you need your guys to have on their trucks? So you know when you get dispatched on a VRV job, you know you got everything, and you sure. can pull out your service checker and sure. and do some real di diagnostic work if, if need be. So aside from the service checker, I like to have a good meter a clamp meter mm -hmm. and a meter that is capable of reading thermistors, um, a 10 in one, and okay. lastly, a megger. You know, with, with those three tools coupled with your service checker, you can solve just about every diagnostic problem. Um, you know, if you really want to get really off in depth, you know, you might start incorporating things like EEV mate or um, EEV magnets and things like that. Mm -hmm. But on a day-to-day -day normal service call, if I'm walking up to a service call, those three tools are the ones that I'm just going to throw in my backpack and take with me. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for showing us how to uh, set up a service checker, how to plug it in, and um, get some of that data out. Hey, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and come back and check us out on Mechanical Pros, and we'll bring you some more uh, service checker data. I think we got another one coming right up.